brothers and sisters in Christ. Several Sundays ago, or more specifically, on the third Sunday of Lent, we read a passage from St. John's Gospel from which we could analyse why people started to believe who our Lord was. He was, is, God incarnated man. And the people believed for two, re two reasons. Firstly, they believed on the strength of the testimony of a Samaritan woman. And secondly, they believed because of what they saw for themselves and in the light of knowing all the Old Testament prophecies. Today in our first reading in the Acts of the Apostles, we find a parallel. We are given a passage about the Apostle Philip in the early church proclaiming Christ in a Samaritan town. As recorded, the message Philip preached was well received because 1. The people heard the testimony of the miracles he performed and 2. They saw them for themselves. Now the similarity of this account to that of the Gospel of John on the third Sunday of Lent in regards to our Lord was done on a purpose. Samaritan woman, Samaritan town. It was recorded in such a manner as to lend credibility to the early church led by St. Peter and the Apostles, including Philip. The church today, as a Christian community, continues to make our Lord's redemptive work present in the world. That church, the one our Lord established, in our time, is the same one led by the successors of St. Peter and the Apostles, now the Pope and the College of Bishops. Clearly, the scripture writers understood the concept of credibility and the concept of passing on the same faith. But credibility can always be easily undermined. And what a sobering example we have had in the scandal of sexual abuse in the church. I'm sure we all share the pain and grief with the whole church by the scandals. The news media, secular news media, feeds on these scandals as they undermine the credibility of the church. Scandals take away the credibility of the church and it makes it easier for people to deny the truth that the church proclaims. And that is the nature of evil. Evil always confuses, confuses us of what is good and wholesome from what is bad and evil. There is, of course, clearly no place in the priesthood and in religious life for those who would, who would harm or abuse anyone, let alone the young. There is clearly no place in the church for covering up such crimes. However, however, when these things happen, the media often presents it or presents them as the failure of the church rather than the failure of individuals within the church. Surely, if I, if I as a priest, am caught stealing, let's say, from the local supermarket, none of you, hopefully, would renounce your faith. I hope your faith is founded on something more important than my holiness or that of other Christians. If I fail my faith, and in various degrees I do that daily, my failures do not change the good and truth that the church upholds, the goodness and the truth the church upholds. 
and perhaps here we can take a leaf or learn we can take a leaf out of the book of the early church or learn from them learn from the early Christians the early Christians did not focus on the betrayal of Judas nor did the early Christians focus on the human, weak, human weakness of the apostles and other Christians if they did we wouldn't have a church today instead they focused on the 11 apostles and the other disciples focused on their witnessing their preaching their miracles their love and their living the gospel the church must not be judged by those who do not live their faith but by those who do now in our time <clears throat> Even Time magazine, one which sometimes has been quite hostile to the, church, to the church, made a very good point several years ago. It said that, or it reported in the magazine, that the Catholic Church is by far, uh, don't forget it's, American, it's an, an American magazine, the church is by far America's biggest social service agency and I quote does a tremendous amount of good tending to the sick feeding the hungry counseling the troubled and running a school system that is the envy of the secular educator public and private unquote in other words whatever mud that is thrown at the church that our Lord established no one can take away the fact that the church has always promoted human and Christian values with great vigor and intensity to, con to consolidate all that is noble in humanity but the thing is the church's credibility rests not only on the popes and the bishops and priests and religious, but on each one of us who call ourselves Christian or Catholics. In fact, the strongest argument against Catholicism is often the life of the average Catholic. And if anything, this Sunday's Gospel has our Lord giving us a clue, a clue as to where to find the credibility of our faith he said if you love me you will keep my commandments if you love me you'll keep my commandments fidelity to the commandments is the proof of our, of our love for him fidelity to commandments is that path to holiness that gives us credibility we Christians, we Catholics, have much to offer a world that is hungry for values and direction. Thank God, truth, goodness and beauty are always on the side of the church. Now at the peak of the media frenzy in America, during the time of the scandals, Pope John Paul II said to the United States Cardinals, and I quote, A great work of art may be blemished, but its beauty remains. And this is a truth which any intellectually honest critic will recognize. Unquote. And I'll add to that, we all, as members of the church, participate in that great work of art that is the church and our best contribution to its beauty is found on heeding the words if you love me you will keep my commandments